A good season of Big Brother will oftentimes have a standout rivalry. Two players on opposing sides that make it their mission to get the other out of the game, yet can't ever seem to figure out a way to actually evict them. Watching their back and forth across the season is a real treat for us viewers, and even they have to know, deep down, that their rivalry is an epic one. Except sometimes they don't know. Sometimes, they don't even know there's a rivalry to begin with. Throughout Big Brother history, there have been some one-sided feuds, you could say, where one player has it out for another player, all while the recipient is sometimes blissfully unaware that there's even a problem between them. Consider subscribing if you aren't already, as we are marching closer and closer to that 100k mark. And without further ado, here are five of Big Brother's greatest one-sided rivalries. I cannot let him distract me from the fact that I'm about to get Sarah Beth out of this house and into jury. Now, before we get started, I realized something kind of odd after making this list. Almost every one-sided rivalry that I came up with was from a modern season of Big Brother. On the flip side, I do plan on making a video about Big Brother's best traditional rivalries, and almost all of those were from the older seasons of Big Brother. I don't know if there's some type of correlation there, whether it be that confrontation was much more apparent back in the day, which allowed for rivalries to be more public and combative and be you know, an actual rivalry, compared to now, where there are way less fights and less of a reason for two house guests to have a head-to-head -head rivalry. Except for this week, Big Brother 26 is the total exception. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that I am not purposefully ignoring the older seasons of Big Brother, and rather, I just find that most of the great rivalries from back then went both ways, instead of just one, and it would be better saved for a video about Big Brother's best standard rivalries. Okay, now that that's out of the way, Let's actually get started. Oh, Turner, we've had such but a long But he knows, like, oh, the first... The <laughs> Starting things off, probably the most famous example of a one-sided rivalry, at least for me, was Steve's vendetta against Becky in Big Brother 17. If you were strictly an episode watcher, you wouldn't have really known that there was any malice between the two of them, up until, seemingly out of nowhere, during the week 5 veto competition, Becky had messed up, and Steve had a diary room session where he was just reveling in the face of Becky's distress. For a little backstory, throughout the beginning of the game, Becky had won HOH twice, and both times, she nominated Steve as a pawn. Also, Becky was seemingly the only player in the house that actually caught on to the style of game that Steve was playing, where he was trying to be cool with all sides of the house. So as a result of this, Becky didn't really talk that much game with Steve. And this kind of frustrated him. So when you combine all of these factors together, Steve had some valid reasoning to want to target her. But instead of mentioning it once or twice, or just having it as something on his radar, Steve constantly would talk about how much he wanted Becky gone. He'd bring it up on the live feeds all the time. When he won the HOH and the double eviction, his plan was to backdoor Becky had Jackie won the veto to take herself off. And he constantly thought that Becky was out to get him in the game and that he needed to strike first before she succeeded in getting him out. The funny thing is, I don't think Becky ever actually had it out for Steve. Although she did nominate Steve twice and didn't talk much game with him, that was mostly just because she had no idea who Steve was actually loyal to. But because she didn't put up a front and pretend to be Steve's best friend, and rather just acted as though they weren't allies slash friends in the game, which, to be fair, they weren't, Steve thought that Becky was out to get him. What makes this rivalry even more humorous is that when Becky exited the house at the final nine, she had nothing but praise for Steve's game. She said that she thought he was playing the best out of everyone in the house and that she wanted him to win over everyone else. This was, of course, exactly the opposite of what Steve expected, and you could see the shock on his face when he saw that Becky had cast her vote for him to win at the end of the season. This one-sided feud definitely had a happy ending for the two of them, as after the season ended, Steve explained that he never actually disliked Becky and that any rivalry shown was strictly in a game manner. And on social media, he sometimes plays into the joke that he still hates Becky, but it's all in good fun now. Ooh, Becky drops her ball. She is crushed. I am loving just watching her cry. Crash. Seeing that misery is making me so freaking happy. The only person I don't want to win this head of household competition is Becky. Becky and I haven't made a particularly good connection in this game, and I'm really scared I'm going to be her target because she sees me as a threat. Rachel! Woo! Yeah! 
see. I want to see you get your hands dirty. Get into the social game. Throw a target out there. Win a comm. Yes, Becky, I'm aware I have no blood on my hands. This has all been intentional. And now that you're advertising, you're aware of this, you're my next target. What the hell's different? I don't see it. Becky, I am so sick of you screwing me over in this game. When will you let me go, please? Becky has voted for Steve to be the winner. Up next is not even like a fun one-sided feud. It was just such an odd one that had me like, dude, come on, just chill out a little bit. And that's Memphis's one-sided rivalry with David in Big Brother All-Stars 2. Once the season began, it became pretty clear pretty quickly that Memphis did not have respect for David, likely stemming from the fact that he didn't consider David to be an all-star, since he was a night one boot on his original season and didn't really fit Memphis's criteria of best of the best. Memphis could have just let this be and left David alone, but obviously, since it's on this list, that's not what happened. As soon as Memphis won the HOH in week two, he made David a have-not, nominated him, and gave him a demeaning speech as he did so. But... David survived the eviction, and the one-sided rivalry continued on. At the final 10, Memphis won the HOH again, and although he had made a deal with David to not nominate him and keep him safe, it was actually just an elaborate master plan to backdoor him instead. Which, uh, okay, sure, Memphis. Even the way he strong-armed David into the fake deal was pretty aggressive, but whatever. After Tyler won the veto, he was able to convince Memphis that taking the shot at David was not necessary yet, and that he should look elsewhere, and Memphis eventually obliged, helping David to survive Memphis's second HOA train. But when it happened a third time, David's luck had finally run out. Memphis won the HOH at the final eight during the triple eviction, and just like always, he targeted David. And this time, the shot finally landed, as David was evicted in a close 3-2 vote. This one-sided feud was just so odd to me, because it lasted basically the entire season, even though David never actually did anything to Memphis other than just be a first boot the last season, I guess. I don't really know Memphis's reasoning, it kind of felt a little bit elitist. For what it's worth, I love David's response after he was evicted when Sharon Tharp asked him why he thought Memphis targeted him so much. David said, Memphis just doesn't like me. I think I'm just a very considerate and nice person in the house. He wanted somebody more mean? I don't know. I don't know why he targeted me so much. Maybe I'm just too cool for school. I don't know. I hope he doesn't win though. Keep being an icon, David. Never change. Memphis is one person in the house I did not want to get head of household. I don't dislike him, but we're just not friends. <laughs> David, have fun, buddy. I chose David to be a have-not because he's the rookie out of this whole group, so I'm going to put him to the test a little bit. David, you're at the grown-ups table now, and buddy, you're going to have to prove yourself. The deal is straightforward. You shake my hand, then you won't be on the block. You can't talk about it. So if I hear something, you will be public enemy number one. And I'll make a point of it. I've nominated Devon and Kevin, but they're basically just pawns so I can backdoor David. No, Memphis. Why, dude? Come on. Backdooring David is not the right move. I really can't believe you're here either, David. <laughs> well, that means Zingbot are on the same page. He's a rookie. That's so good. I want to get rid of... David because he's gunning for me and all of a sudden it's a hiccup that's not cool so Tyler didn't use the veto which means I can't backdoor David this week guys we all knew this was coming so nominations are David moving forward one season we have a one-sided rivalry that's given us quite a few humorous sound bites this one being Tiffany's one-sided rivalry with Sarah Beth on Big Brother 23 I think this feud really started around week four when Tiffany caught wind that Sarah Beth was campaigning for Hannah to be evicted instead of Whitney, which was absolutely not what Tiffany wanted, and this put her on Tiff's radar. Also, Tiffany recognized how close Sarah Beth was to Kylan, and she saw that as a hurdle that she needed to get rid of in order to reel Kylan closer to her. And maybe Tiffany also just didn't like Sarah Beth that much. Who's to say? But regardless of that specific reasoning, Tiffany had every reason to want to get Sarah Beth out of the house. But for one reason or another, Tiffany just could not get things to go her way in order to get her evicted. 
In week five, Sarah Beth was actually on the block next to Christian, and Tiffany fought hard to keep Christian in the game and evict Sarah Beth pre-jury, but she couldn't secure that last vote to evict Sarah Beth, and she had to settle with evicting Christian. Then, in week six, Tiffany just barely lost the HOH to Kyland, which upset her greatly because she wanted to nominate Sarah Beth so badly, but she knew that Kyland would not put her on the block. Then, in week seven, Tiffany watched as Sarah Beth won the HOH competition, which once again deeply frustrated Tiffany as she desperately wanted Sarah Beth out of the house that week. But it didn't seem that Tiffany's feeling towards Sarah Beth were reciprocated, because not only did Sarah Beth not put up Tiffany, but she even stated that she felt super good with Tiffany in the game and wanted to go further with her, which really highlights the one-sidedness of this rivalry. Finally, after like three attempts, Tiffany pulled through and won the week 8 HOH, and she was foaming at the mouth to put Sarah Beth on the block. A little hiccup was thrown into the week as Tiffany's HOH was technically overthrown by Claire, but Tiffany got her to target Sarah Beth too, and Tiffany finally succeeded in getting rid of her. It was one of the more interesting one-sided feuds for me to watch because you could see Tiffany's frustrations grow week after week after week as Sarah Beth continued to avoid being evicted. And as I said at the beginning of this paragraph, we got quite a few iconic sound bites because of it. Hannah should definitely be safe this week. She is supported by the cookout, but Sarah Beth is actively coming for her. Sarah Beth, oh Sarah Beth. Keeping Christian is more beneficial for my game than Sarah Beth. As long as a cookout member wins, I'm happy. Except Kai. He won't nominate Sarah Beth. Kylan, you are the new head of household. Congratulations. I am very upset that he is the one who won because I know he's not going to nominate Sarah Beth. Congratulations, Sarah Beth. You are the new head of household. Thank you very much. Of all the people, Sarah Beth was my last, the least person in all my life to win. I wanted to be HOH with Sarah Beth on the block. I feel good with Claire and Tiffany. Congratulations to you, Tiffany. You're the new head of household. I did keep Tiffany off the block. She was never an option for me at any point. So hopefully that will mean something to Tiffany. Just in case anyone missed it, Sarah Beth is my target. I cannot let him distract me from the fact that I'm about to get Sarah Beth out of this house. Up next, we have a pretty recent one that really isn't about game at all and is strictly personal. Turner's one-sided rivalry with Jasmine during Big Brother 24. The root of this rivalry can be boiled down to one simple thing. Jasmine was basically just a bad roommate, and Turner had to deal with the brunt of it. After injuring her foot at the end of the first week, Jasmine really hammed up her injury and would require the other house guests to do things for her, whether it be making her food, cleaning something up for her, or literally anything else you could think of. While basically all the house guests helped out Jasmine when they could, the majority of the time, the burden landed on Turner. This is because at the start of week three, Turner got stuck with Jasmine as his festy bestie by default after winning the HOH and her being the only player left without a partner. Turner was already irritated enough by Jasmine as it was, but now they had to spend ample time together. And once the two of them became have-nots in week four, the annoyed dial turned up to an 11. Jasmine would ask him to do things all the time and would kind of order him to cook slop for her when she was hungry, which only increased the disdain Turner had for Jasmine, leading to him infamously eating half of her muffin after they were freed from being have-nots and kickstarting a spree of pranks, you could say, at Jasmine's expense. Although Turner wanted her gone, he never found a way to make it happen. But when Jasmine finally was evicted, Turner wasn't even there to revel in it as it was during the split house week and the two were not in the same yard. Out of all the rivalries we have talked about, this one is, by far, the one that had to do the least with actual game stuff. Which is kind of funny, because they were actually on opposing sides of the house, yet that really had a small impact on the rivalry. After the season, though, the two of them reconciled and even got matching muffin tattoos. How cute. Yeah! Yeah! You just hit my foot! Do you need ice, Jasmine? Put it in the big bag. Yeah. 
a fly could land on Jasmine's foot and she would act like she was thrown off Mount Kilimanjaro. When are the festy besties ending? Because I have had enough of Jasmine. Every single day I am with her, I go a little bit more crazy. Who ate half of my muffin? One of them's half. I went upstairs. I just got down here. I think that Jasmine's my own I could totally see that. I mean, I did. I ate the muffin, let's be honest. Not to exaggerate or anything, but living with Jasmine is probably the hardest thing I have ever done in my life. And even Turner was willing to take one for the team. You can pawn me up. Jasmine has been driving me so crazy that if all else fails and she goes home, I do not mind. Happy, Happy birthday! birthday! Yeah. Turner, what's your top Thank two you. things what you love about me? Um, I'm supposed to come up with two things that I love about Jasmine. Oh, Turner, we've had such but a long he, journey. But he knows, like, oh, the first... The... <laughs> Hallelujah, my prayers have been answered, and Jasmine is out of this Big Brother house. Bye. Sayonara to my festy bestie, dude. Finally friggin' out of my head. And now, concluding this video is the one that inspired this whole idea. The funniest one-sided rivalry in the history of Big Brother is Tucker's dying hatred for Lisa during Big Brother 26. On the first night of the season, when all the players were making their introductions, Tucker stood up and he was excited to tell the house guest that he was a chef. But while Tucker was making his introduction, Lisa stood up and interjected, stealing the spotlight from him and announcing that she too was a chef. While Lisa definitely was not trying to be malicious here, it didn't matter. She had unknowingly already made her bed, and now she had to sleep in it. Because from this point on, Tucker had his sights set on evicting her from the house, and he was going to stop at nothing to get his revenge on her for stealing his spotlight. Tucker would slander her to the other house guests. He questioned the legitimacy of her actually being a cook because he claimed her cooking was giving all the house guests stomach problems. He made her a have not in week two, not just because he reveled in the thought of her having to live life a little bit harder in the house, but also to stop her from being able to cook food for everyone. He then pushed for her to be the target in week two, even going so far as to volunteer himself for the block two. So he could either A, be beat her in the AI arena and ensure that she remained on the block for the vote, or B, be the one to sit next to her during the vote as she was evicted from the house. Tucker pushed so hard all week for the target to remain on Lisa that she ended up getting blindsided and voted out nearly unanimously next to Angela, one of the most volatile house guests that I have ever seen, all because she interrupted his introduction on night one. I don't know if I have ever seen a house guest so tunnel visioned on getting a particular player out of the game, but the best part of it all is that Lisa had absolutely no idea that anything was wrong. Tucker played it off so well to Lisa that he was her friend and that he was there for her in the game, all the while secretly plotting her demise from pretty much the second they walked into the house. Lisa really had no idea that Tucker was that against her. In fact, she thought Tucker was on her side and assumed they had this chef-to-chef -chef connection. And it wasn't until she was sitting on the stage with Julie that she learned the truth. Tucker's one-sided feud with Lisa is one of the pettiest things that I have ever seen on the show, but it's also one of the funniest. And I thank him for giving us such a humorous feud to start the season off. I'm Tucker, I'm from Boston. I'm the head chef at the world's first frozen protein bar company. We have a competition here because I'm a chef too. Chelsea, I have the perfect nom for you. Lisa, just because she's a lot to deal with. What kind of chef exercises in the kitchen? Next week, we're having a cooking competition. Who cares? If it gets annoying, let me know because I don't want to be annoying. I need her gone. Lisa is all the way in last. Lisa, whatever you are doing, I love it. Keep going. What do I know? Oh, I do know something. I'm gonna crush this AI arena and make sure Lisa goes home. What is up, chef? I'm on the block. Uh, I'm risking it for the biscuit. It, I volunteered to do it. I feel like I need to do whatever is necessary to keep
keep the target on Lisa. Angela has been emotionally uh, a loose cannon, but regardless of all that, I still want Lisa gone. Hey, Lisa, um, you kind of annoyed me from day one when you were trying to make this competition about who's a better chef in the house, and I was annoyed with the glitter stuff. Sorry. Uh. And there we go. Big Brother has had many iconic rivalries over the years, but we don't talk about one-sided rivalries nearly enough. Sometimes they're funny. Other times, they're weird, but for the most part, they're interesting to watch because you never actually know if the person on the other end of things will actually find out that it exists in the first place before they're evicted from the show. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, consider subscribing. I, of course, need to give that extra special shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons who I desperately hope don't have a one-sided rivalry with me. But if they do, they're doing a pretty darn good job at hiding it. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Memphis is in my alliance, but Memphis is lame, bro. That might have been how they played back in like 1943 during Big Brother 10. We'll show him how to play. He's going to get cooked. Congratulations, Memphis. You have won the golden power veto.